Hey, how are you doing today? Hey, we're so excited to have you join us this morning. You know, I keep saying it, it's so true. Prayer and the word has no distance. We're just excited for what God has for us this morning. And what I want to remind you also, please log in and write your comments if there are any prayer requests. Please let us know. We want to pray for you. We want to be there for you. It's more than just a gathering. It's, it's about family coming together. This is what it's all about. So right now we're going to pray for some people that are that posted some prayer requests. And we're going to pray for Michael Hamel. He's an RN in Florida. This is Vicky's son. We're also going to lift up Miss Priscilla Flores, Priscilla Flores and her family, whom uh, her sister-in-law passed away. We lift up Carlos and he's in the Navy. He's been shipped to New York to help with the, uh, with the outbreak. And Ms. Margarita Gonzalez, who uh, has the emergency uh, surgery this morning. She's in Corpus Christi. So let's pray before, before them and we're going to pray for service. So Heavenly Father, you know God. Your word says that prayer knows no distance, God. We lift you up Michael, Priscilla, Carlos, and, and Margarita, God. I, Father, I pray, oh God, that you will cover them by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, God. We pray for signs, wonders, and miracles. We pray for protection, supernatural protection, oh God. Lead them in the way they should go. I thank you, oh God, that this you have made. And as we choose to rejoice, we're glad in you, oh God. Because this is a day for signs, for wonders, for miracles, oh God. We thank you, God, that your faithfulness. And you still sit on your throne, and your word does not return to your void. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you for the service this morning. We're asking you, Lord God, to have your way. Have your way here, and have your way over there. Have your way here, and over there, Lord God. I pray that people's faith may rise up to the greatest level they've ever had. I pray you will touch hearts this morning, oh God. I pray for ears to be open to hear your voice, the good shepherd who calls by name. And a stranger's voice we will not hear even turn to God. And I'm asking, oh God, to anoint us, oh God, not just to reach the people that are hearing us, oh God, but to reach people that can't even hear, oh God, this morning, oh God. That you, oh God, have your way this morning once again, oh God. Thank you for the anointing to reach the world, oh God, for your kingdom and for your glory. It is for your kingdom and it is for your glory. We pray for it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And everybody say it. Come on, say it, amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray.
You are the creator of heaven and earth, God. Hallelujah. We exalt your name, God. Thank you, God. Because you are a God who writes on sound. And I know, Lord God, there's not a doubt in my heart, Lord God, that from the moment the praise and worship started, mm, you follow sound, Lord God. Sound that exalts your name, God. We ask you to have your way this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And everybody says, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ms. Melinda Nava, praise and worship leader. Praise God for your life. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm so happy to be here this morning. I'm, matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I'm speechless and I'm, I'm actually lost for words. Um, the presence of God in this place is so, so strong that it almost like, almost like you can't talk. You want to convey a message, but almost like it's, 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 it's got me tongue tied. But I want you to understand that the whole purpose of this is not really, we're not into entertainment business. So I believe in my heart. I really do believe in my heart that this, this is a purpose for this, for having a life of Facebook and, and Periscope. And the whole purpose about this is to reach you. To reach you. Because God has something great for you. I really do believe that God is not done with us. I believe that God has just started something great. I know that there's all kinds of stuff going on, crisis and situations, you know. We, we listen too much to the news. Don't let the news, uh, you become the news. Don't become the news. Uh, you, you, stay strong in the Word of God. Whatever God says, just, just do it. You know, I, I remember, it reminds me of the wedding uh, in Galilee. And that was the first time that, that Jesus made a miracle. And, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, comes to Jesus and says, they're out of wine. And that was all she said. That was all she said. And then she went and told the servants, whatever he says, just do it. Because whatever God says in his word, just do it. Because when you do whatever God says, it's a done deal. Amen? Amen. So we are in the same subject of rise up. Like I said before, why rise up? Because you can't. We need to rise up to a breakthrough. Amen? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. And our sound minds. God did not give us the spirit of fear, power of love and a sound mind. Because why? Because fear paralyzes you. When fear, you allow fear to come into your house, into your life, it paralyzes you. It keeps you from reaching forward what God has for you. As a matter of fact, fear can even get you sick without even a disease. God, fear can, 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 can paralyze you. And we're going to talk about Joshua today. But I believe that God wants us to rise up because God has breakthroughs for us. Uh, I, I, in order to, to get a breakthrough in the areas that we can see, it's very important that we need to get a breakthrough in the areas that we cannot see. Because the real breakthrough is not when God breaks a cycle in your life. The real breakthrough that God can give you is the one where He shows you what's making it happen. Have you ever been in a situation where you keep promising yourself, you know what, it, it, uh, I'm gonna, that's it, I'm, I made up my mind, I'm going to think straight, or I'm not going to drink, I'm not going to smoke, or whatever it is, uh, I'm going to go back to school. Have you ever been in a situation like that, and you turn around, and all of a sudden, it didn't happen. It just didn't happen. And God calls those cycles of life that causes us to repeat something. We have no energy or strength to change. Ch change is, is good, but a change that cannot be sustained it's not good. For God wants to bring change. But a change that is sustained. A change that stays on. Not a temporary change. I remember when I was in the world, I remember that when I was addicted to drugs and, and uh, oh, you don't know how many times I got up in the morning. How many times I, I got up in the morning and I said to myself, I didn't know Jesus, but I said to myself, that's it. I'm going to quit. Listen, I'm going to change my life. That's it. You know, I'm this, this moment, this moment, I'm going back to school. I'm not going to drink anymore. I'm gonna, and I'm not talking about this, this situ a particular situation. But, but every time that no matter how, how much I talked about what I wanted to change, uh, for some reason, I broke my promise. And, and I believe sometimes what happens is that the breakthrough that we need is not in the breakthrough in the, the stuff that we can see. 
But I believe the breakthrough that has more powerful is the deal with the stuff we can't see. Because it, 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 sometimes uh, um, life cre creates cycles in our lives. Are y'all with me? I want to talk today about Joshua, the life of Joshua. We're going to be going to Joshua chapter 6. But first, just a little bit about Joshua. Joshua is the successor, successor to Moses. Moses was assigned and picked by God to lead Israel out of bondage, out of slavery, out of Egypt. That God chose Moses. Moses was picked by God, assigned by God to lead the people out of bondage. Amen. It was chosen by God. And, 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 and it's called, it comes out of the book of Exodus. The word Exodus means and zip. The book of Exodus is, is, is a book that God is a God of Exodus. And if you're a child of God, it means that you are never trapped. Oh, come on. If you're a child of God, that means you're never trapped. You know, it, 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 you cannot be trapped if you are a child of God. You may feel trapped. You may look trapped. But we understand that the book of Exodus is about a God who is a God of exits. A God who is a God that can take you out of a place and take you into a better place. And every time that I read the, 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 the story about the Red Sea, and you got to understand that the Red Sea is not a motivation story. It's not a, it's not a story to motivate us. Uh, the, when we read about the Red Sea, how God took Israel out of Egypt, out of, out of slavery. Uh, and we read it. I don't think God wrote down that story because he wanted us to be motivated. I don't think God wrote it down so that he wants us to stand in front of the Gulf or in front of the Rio Grande River and, and come and ask God to open it up. Uh, we need to believe that the rest in the Bible is, is to remind us that God is a God of impossibilities. That no matter when you're standing in front of something that is impossible, God gave God, whatever God did for Israel... If God opened up the Red Sea for Israel, God won't open up and make ways for you. The Bible says God is a God who, who opens doors that, and he shuts doors that no man can open. Are y'all with me today? So for Israel, in order for them to, uh, uh, to fulfill the promise of God, God had told Israel, you have to occupy what belongs to you. They were, had been in bondage for 400 years. Everybody say 400 years. They, they, they didn't see themselves. This is the problem. They didn't see themselves. They're not in bondage, but they didn't see themselves anymore as soldiers. They still saw themselves as slaves. Amen? They, they were out of Egypt, but Egypt was not out of them. God says, you, you are not ready. Listen to me. God told them, you are not ready to occupy your promise until I get Egypt out of you. There are some promises that God has for us. And until God deals with the situation about us, sometimes we're not ready to obtain the promise. Amen? In other words, because we need to learn how to see ourselves. As a matter of fact, you will never be able to fight until you see yourself right. And God took, took, took Israel, He took them through the wilderness, and the wilderness was supposed to be a season. It wasn't supposed to be a camp out. God took them to the wilderness because God told them, if I take it because God wanted to to remind them of who they were. God takes Israel out of, uh, out of Egypt, out of bondage, and takes them into the wilderness. And the only reason he did it, because God wanted to remind them of who they were. God wanted them to know that they are the head and not the tail. God wants me to tell you, you're the head and not the tail. God wanted them to know that they're above and not beneath. God wanted to remind them that they were not their past. God wanted to remind them that they were not weak. God wanted to remind them that they were not the mistakes that they had made. And that's the only reason God, when God delivered Israel out of Egypt, He took them through the wilderness. And it was meant for just a season. Because God wanted themselves to see the way God sees, sees them. God wants you to see the way He sees you. God don't want you to look at you because of your past mistakes or, or the situation, what you went through, what, where you came out of. God wants you to see yourself the way He sees you. Amen. And the wilderness was supposed to be a season. But that season lasted for 40 years. Can you imagine 40 years? 40 years is not a season. 40 years is a cycle. 40 years was not a season that God wanted to go through the wilderness. 40 years became a cycle. And some people, when we talk about Joshua and Caleb, they decided not to follow the cycle. They decided to say, you know what? I'm not going to stay in this cycle just to keep a relationship. 
They decided to step forward and they knew that God had potential for them. So in order for them to go to their potential, they have to step to a higher level. But sometimes when God calls you to do something greater, there are some things you're going to have to learn you've got to walk away from. People, things, you've got to walk, walk away, got to walk away from them. You cannot stay in the same cycle of, of relationships. Are y'all with me? And most of the time when we believe God for something greater, we believe, we believe that we can, we believe that God will, but we stay in the same arena of a cycle with the same friends, the same mentality. And I love the way Joshua and Caleb did. Joshua and said, Caleb said, you know what? I'm not going to stay in this cycle of for another 40 years. So for me to, to step out of the cycle is I'm going to have to step away from the relationship that are not helping me out. Because if, if, they, if they stay in the same, stood in the same relationship, that they would have never made it to the promised land. Okay? Not everybody grows the way you grow. Not everybody thinks the way you think. Nobody, not everybody sees the way you see. Some people will not be out of your life. But sometimes we have to realign ourselves. That's good. And God tells Joshua, there's a city called Jericho that I want you to conquer. I love, I love Jericho was, was considered to be a very fortified city. A city that was so strong in its walls that they were unconquerable. Unconquerable. The Bible says that the walls were so high. I'm talking about super, but it, they were so wide that you could ride a, 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 a chariot right on top of it. They were conquer, con conquerable, but even though it was a city that was almost impossible to conquer, God had told Israel, it's yours. It's yours. So I want you to go with me to Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 through 2. You are powerful people. Verse 1. Look at the way God talks to them. I love the way God talks to me. I love the way God, when God is talking to an individual, He, he never talks about what is or what was. He always talks about what can be. This is the way God talks to you and me. When God tells me something and I'm, I can, I, sometimes I'm negative about a situation, when God stops me, He reminds me not where I was, where I am, but where I could be. Now in verse 1 of, of Joshua chapter 6, it says, Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. Watch. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. You know that the enemy is more afraid of you than you are afraid of it? Come on. Your enemy is scared of you. Your enemy is afraid if you ever rise up to your potential. Your enemy knows what you're capable of doing. So sometimes your enemy will keep you locked up in a situation to keep you from becoming what God created you to be. The enemy was afraid. This is just talking about ex-slaves. Ex-slaves. These guys are not even, they're not even fighting. But you've got this fortified city, a big city who's got fortified walls, who is unconquerable, but they're afraid of these ex-slaves. Because when the enemy finds out who you are, the enemy will run away from us. So the enemy gets us to believe to be afraid. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of a love of sound mind. Hallelujah. So they, they, they locked themselves up, even though these guys were trained soldiers. And they were very uh, modern in those times. And the Lord said to Joshua, I'm talking to you too this morning. He said, see, everybody say see. see. He said, I've given you, I've given Jericho into your hand. It's king and the mighty man of valor. I've given you. The word given means it's something that's past tense. In other words, God is telling them, you, telling them you have not even made a step yet. But I've already determined your outcome. God says, I've given it to you. You haven't even fought. You haven't even lifted up a sword. You've not even broken down the walls. You've not gone in. But I'm talking about past tense. My Bible tells me that God predestined you. God went to your end before he started to the beginning. And God says, you know what? You have not even made a step yet. You have not even stepped towards it. But I've already determined what your outcome is going to be. The first word God tells them, he says, see. Everybody say, see. 
Sí. I mean, if you and I, if God was talking to you and me, and he's telling me, and he's telling you and me, told me you look, look, see. And what it was, was to look this, at this wall. We was to see a wall. But God is talking to the, talking to Joshua, and giving Joshua visionary eyes. He's trying to show him, to give him visionary eyes, because only visionary people can see through walls. I'm going to say it again. God is giving Joshua visionary eyes. Because only people with vision can see through walls. Only people that can see something better than themselves can see far through things that are holding them back. And God has given this, 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 this visionary powerful eyes to Joshua. And he tells Joshua, the first thing he tells Joshua, Joshua, see! Look! Don't look at the wall. But I want you to see through the wall that what's on the other side of that wall belongs to you. Amen? Amen? And he said, you shall march around the city, all you men. Now we're talking about breakthrough. We're talking about breakthrough. We're talking about the power of breakthrough. And how they get a breakthrough. Because you're talking about an a, a, a in, impenetrable wall. You're talking about a strong, powerful wall. You're talking about people that are unconquerable. And you're talking about seeing something they never did before. This is their first fight. They never fought against anybody before. They never, they don't even, they've, never, they've never encountered or gone face to face with an enemy. They're new at this. Okay? They're new at this. And God wants them to get a breakthrough. Everybody say breakthrough. God wants them to get a breakthrough. God wants what He promised them to have. God wants you to have what He promised you. God wants you to, to, to live to your greatest potential. God wants you to touch, touch nations. God wants you to go back to school. God wants you to be debt free. God wants you to be healed. God wants you to, to, to step away from heart, you know, a heart that's hurt from your past. God wants something for you. God wants to give you a breakthrough. But when God's going to give you a breakthrough, He always gives you details on how to get there. So the first thing God tells them, see, I want you to be a visionary. And I want you to see yourself with the, with the diploma. I want you to see yourself already healed. Hallelujah. I want you to see yourself already with your breakthrough. God says you got to become the visionary. You cannot focus on what is or what was. Focus on what it could be. Hallelujah. And he says, I've given you everything. It's a past sense. Your fight is a, it's a fixed fight. You already got a victory. Hallelujah. This is what God is telling them. And then the next thing he says, okay, now? He said, I want you to... Uh, he said, now... Now you shall march, everybody say march, around the city, all you men of war. You shall go around the city, city once. He said, I don't want just any man. Not just anybody. I want men that can fight. I don't want just anybody walking around this city that don't know how to fight. This is a metaphor for intercessors. Come on. Because not everybody will praise, believe what they pray. He said, if I want to, I want to break through this, through this wall, I want people, strong intercessors, that when they pray, they believe when they pray. I want intercessors that believe that when they pray, they get their breakthrough. Come on. Are y'all with me? He said, I want intercessors that way. A metaphor for breakthrough. I want you to go and miss this up. Uh, James chapter 2 verse 17. I want to show you something what happens when you pray without faith. The Bible said faith without works is dead. So God says, I want to give you a breakthrough. I want you to have your, the, the, the desires of your heart. I want you to reach your dream. I want you to get there. But if you have no faith when you pray, it is like if you're standing behind a wall and you're trying to break it down all by yourself. But when you have faith, when you pray, it is equivalent to you and God pushing down that wall. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. It is equivalent to you and God pushing down that wall. And then he says, and he said, and seven priests shall bear seven trumpets, a ram's horn before the ark. When I was reading this, I was like, can I, can I, can I take off my jacket? I want to feel comfortable. On, I'm getting hot. It must be the anointing. Yes. Come on. And God tells him this. 
I'm going to give myself a man. And God told him, I want you to get seven priests with ram horns. And I'm reading, it's like, why seven and why ram horns? The word ram, the ram horn was a signified of a metaphor of praise. Praise, people that praise God are people that don't complain. He said, I don't want you to get me complainers. I want you to get me praisers that praise God. Because you cannot look at a wall. You cannot look at what's impossible and complain about what you're looking at. And I believe that God can get you there. He said, I want people to praise. That they put all their tenacity. They put all their heart and soul in what they believe in God. He said, complainers will never break the wall. He said, but people that praise me, that believe that I am more than able, those are the people that get to see the impossibilities of what I can do. That's what praises do. So you believe in God for a breakthrough. Understand you got to see something. You got to believe you already got it. Are y'all with me? And then you got to be a prayer warrior. And you got to be to learn to be a praise. And thank you God. Thank you Jesus that this is the day that the Lord has made. I should to rejoice and to be glad in it. Let me tell you something. God is not looking for people that are qualified. God is looking for people that will take him at his word to do it. Because I got all kinds of people in my Bible who had some kind of a situation going on with them. Moses, he stuttered. Jeremiah was a scary cat. You have all kinds of people that didn't have it all together. But God was somebody who will take him at his word and look at a wall and say, you know what? I praise you God that you will get me through it. I praise you God that I know what it doesn't matter what I'm going through it's going to be subject to change. Amen. That's what God is looking for. And then he says why praisers? Why praisers first? Watch what it says. Prophets of ram's horn before the ark. Wow. Now way back then in the olden days the ark represented the presence of God. People that praise and don't complain the presence of God follows them everywhere they go. These are the people that wherever they go, God walks to them. Because they know how to praise God. They know how to believe God. They know how to see the things in God. And God says, I follow those people. I follow those people. Hallelujah. But they said, then he said, and then about the seventh day. He said, on the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times. Seven times. This is the problem. We give up too soon. This is the problem. God was positioning them for a breakthrough. It's learning how to position yourself in faith that God is the God of breakthrough. Amen. If you add the six days, they walked around on the seventh day that they did seven times, that's 13 times. And most people never see their breakthrough because they give up. They stop praising God. You know, on John chapter 12, verse 13, I know this is Palm Sunday. This is Palm, John chapter 12, verse 13. This is Palm Sunday. You know what God told me this morning? Palm Sunday is not for everybody. Not, you, you can do Palm Sunday. Doesn't mean you believe in it. It says... And, and, and do you have John chapter 12, Pastor Tim? Verse 13? 13? John chapter 12, verse 13. They took branches of palm leaves and they went out to meet him and they cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. People that celebrate Palm Sunday are people that can see beyond. And Palm Sunday is not really for everybody. You can get all the palm branches you want. It don't make you closer to God. Ooh, come on. For all I know, you can get a piece of mesquite branch and you still get a miracle of God. Mm. Because it's a, it depends on what, how you celebrate, how you celebrate Palm Sunday. And I don't really believe it was not the palm that did the miracle. I think it was the, the actual acknowledgement of the one who was passing through there that he was the king of kings and the, and the, God, and the son of God. Amen. It is it's how you, you, you praise God. And so on seventh day you shall march around the city seven times. And the priest shall blow the trumpet. Wow. Blow the trumpet. 
And it should come to pass that when they make a long blast with a ram's horn, that when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people will shout with great sh shout. Then it says, then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, every one of them, straight before him. He said, on the seventh day, I want to, I was going to ask Pastor Robert Ray to bring his trumpet. He said, I don't want any kind of praise. I want a long praise. I want an unstoppable praise. And uh, to me, I don't think that the shout really was, wasn't much for, that broke down the wall. That's just me. I don't believe the shout broke down the wall. I think, to me, the shout was for victory. I, to me, a shout was a sign of them actually seeing themselves victorious. Because God told me this morning, if you see no victory, you get no victory. Mm. I'm going to say it again. If you see no victory, you will never get no victory. Because you have nothing to shout about. Psalm 47 verse 1. Clap your hands to all your people and shout out unto God with a voice of triumph. Confidence goes before every five. Confident that goes before every fight wins the battles. And this is what, what I love. He says, and the wall will fall down. Everybody say flat. 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 God never said crumble. You know what would have happened if the walls would have fallen down and crumbled? All the people that were walking around Jericho would have gotten killed. It sounds pretty much like this, the story of my life and your life. Aren't you glad your life did not crumble? Aren't you, glad, aren't you glad that God did not allow you to crumble, but God gave you a God is a God of second chances? I'm so glad that every time that I fell down, when I was in my most miserable self and I was about to shoot myself and I had a gun to my head, I'm so glad that I did not crumble because if I would have crumbled, I would have killed myself. But God allowed me to fall flat on the ground because the God understood that he will fall flat, you saw, fall seven times, seven times God will pick him up. Amen? God did not allow us to fall flat. And I want you to go to verse 18. And I'm almost going to end with this. The devil comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. God is trying to talk to him. It's, God's trying to commit a posture of attitude that you must have. That all of us must have that we should carry. And he says, verse 18, And you by all means abstain from accursed things. Lest you become accursed when you take of the accursed things and make the camp of Israel accursed and trouble it. In other words, God says, You are worried about your enemies. I'm not worried about your enemies. I got that. Who I'm worried about is you. Because your enemy cannot destroy you, but you can destroy yourself. He says, Be careful of accursing because that's the way Satan works. John 10, 10, it says that it, Satan, the devil does, does not come but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. In other words, God says, do not ignore your enemy's attacks. Your enemy comes to take away from you. Exactly. I don't know if you ever, have you ever been bitten by mosquitoes, but the Bible does not say ignore the devil. <laughs> God, I don't ignore mosquitoes. I either kill them, swap them, smack them, or I'm going to put them off. And God said, you don't ignore Satan. You do something about it. In James chapter 4, he says, resist the devil. Submit unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Jesus did not resist the devil only, but he rebuked the devil. You got to understand, the devil comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. When, when the serpent appeared to, to Adam and Eve in the garden, he did not shut down the fruit of the tree down their throat. He convinced them of who they were. But this is the problem, guys, that your breakthrough affects everybody else. And whatever decision you make, if you make a good decision, 
people are going to be benefited from it. But if you make a bad decision, everybody's going to get it. So God is saying in Israel, be careful. Be careful what you do in your breakthrough. Because sometimes what happens, you don't understand that your decision has the power to touch everybody. In other words, it has community-wide implications. Many of us don't understand that, that our decisions affect everybody else. Whether they're good decisions or bad decisions. Some of y'all say, you know what, it's not me. I mean, it's just me. I'm the one going, uh, I cut myself. I'm, I'm, is it called emo? I'm emo. I cut myself. I'm not hurting anybody else. I'm hurting myself. No. You're affecting somebody else. Some of us are thinking about, you, know, my, I, I, you don't understand, I, I drink, but I drink for myself. No. You're hurting somebody else. Because somebody else, somebody else it's, 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 it's implying something bad on somebody else. My good decisions will affect everybody else too. Could it be that God has not released to us what we believe for? Because we're not ready to take it? Could it be that you're asking God for a lot, but God has not released it to you? Because he understands you might not make the wrong mistakes in the future? Could believe that's why? And God tells them, I, I, in verse 18, he says, I'm not concerned about your enemy. I can take care of your enemy. What I am is concerned about you. Because I don't want you to fall into a cycle. I delivered you from a cycle, but you can easily fall back into it if it not change the way you think. God wants us to use to change the world. God wants us to make a difference. He wants us. I, I remember that when I came to the Lord the first time, I, I didn't even know that what a change or what a difference is going to make. I thought it was just for me. I was the one that needed deliverance. I'm the one that needed Jesus. I needed it really bad. I still do. You know, uh, I didn't know that it was going to affect, I thought it was going to just affect me. Honestly, I did. I'll never forget. But you, you, you should see how many people got affected by my decision to follow God. How many people's lives were changed because of my decision. But I look back. I look back. And according to verse 18, I look back and all the wrong decisions that I made. And how many people I affected in the wrong way. How many people got hurt because of the wrong decisions that I did in the past. And I, although I knew in my, in my heart, I knew that what I was lost, I didn't have Jesus in my heart. I knew that wasn't all there was to me. I knew deep on the inside of me there was dreams, there were desires. There was a, 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 a boy or a man wanting to, to, to get a hold of what, what I knew. And I believe that's because I didn't even know Jesus, what I believed would belong to me. I knew there was more potential inside of me. I didn't know how to run after it. But little did I know that all this, the bad decisions that I was making was hurting everybody else around me. I'm not proud of my bad decisions. I'm not proud of my bad decisions. But I remember making the right decision. I remember going to Jesus and letting him come into my heart. And the moment I make that right decision, it affected so many of you. My family, my, my friends that are close and far away. It brought new people, new friends. And the only reason that I did it was I had to do what Joshua and Caleb did. Joshua and Caleb did not stay in the cycle of walking around the wilderness with everybody else. They decided not to. They did not say to stay in the same cycle of wilderness mentality just to have relationships, just to have friends. And I knew that right after my salvation, I had to change. The, I had to change not only the, with the things that I, I, I hang out with, but with the people I also hang out with. Because not everybody was growing the way I was growing. Not everybody goes where you go. Not everybody believes what you believe. And there's some things you're going to have to get rid of if you want to get to the next level. God wants to give you a breakthrough. God does want to give you a breakthrough. But you know what? The breakthrough is determined by what you are, you are making up your mind to say, I want it, but I'm willing to let go of some things in my life. I'm willing to walk away from some things in my life. Maybe I'm willing to walk away from poverty mentality. Maybe I need to walk away from my, my addiction. Maybe I need to go get some counseling. Maybe I need to ask God to deliver me from this addiction. But I, you cannot you cannot change one thing and go into another but still keep the old thing. You have to walk away. That's what the, the Apostle Paul says. I forget those things which are behind but I got to reach forward to the things which are ahead. Hallelujah. But God wants to use you. God wants to bless you. God wants to heal you. God wants to give you a breakthrough. But you've got to be like Joshua and Caleb. you got to change the way you think you got to make up your mind. Do you want it or do you not want it? Because change that is not sustained is not a change. It's called a cycle. Come on. Yes. It's called a cycle. It's called a cycle. God healed you from diabetes, but you start eating wrong. You got changed, but it was not sustained. I, I can go back to drinking. I have no problem with that. 
Some of y'all have been saved longer than Moses. Maybe you know God in a different way than I do. But this morning I was, I was reminded, my, the Lord spoke to me this morning. It was like so powerful, but I'm not going to tell you everything. Everything, but God was telling me that, you know, there are Josephs. And I was in prayer. It's just so powerful. And God says, George, from the moment you were born, I had already given you a coat of many colors. I chose you before the foundation of the earth. I had already put a mantle on you, like I did on Joseph. And he says, if you read the life of Joseph, Joseph was attacked time after time after time after time. And because the enemy knew the potential was in, that was inside of Joseph. The enemy knows you more than you know yourself. The enemy knows what you're capable of. The enemy knows you're going to make, uh, you're going to record CDs in the future. The enemy knows you're going to be touching youth all over the world, all over the nation, on a VS satellite. The enemy knows all these things. And the enemy knows your potential. He knows who you are. He knows as long as he can stay, keep you scared, you'll never reach what God told you to reach. And God told me, he says, the enemy knows your potential so much that for Joseph, he was willing to start the whole world to kill Joseph. He was after Joseph's ability and the mantle and the calling, the anointing that God had put on Joseph. He was after Joseph from the very beginning, from the first moment that he was born, God had a calling on Joseph. Joseph was sold to slavery. And the enemy wanted to destroy Joseph and give him a slavery mentality, but he stayed connected to God. And then he was, and he was brought to Potiphar's and he was put in prison. He went through all kinds of situations. And then he starved the whole world, brought famine. And it was not for the world, it was against the man who got it called out with the biggest anointing. And I'm gonna tell you something, guys. I know y'all listening to me today. Those attacks that you're going through, I don't know. There's gotta be a lot of Josephs out there. I know we're going through a crisis, but you think the attack, the attack is not against you, it's against what you're carrying inside of you. The attack you're going through is not you personally, it's what God has put on you that the devil is after. He's after your potential because if he can keep you on a cycle of wilderness mentality, you will never reach your promised land. I'm preaching better than y'all shouting. Amen. You will never reach your promised land. As long as you stay there. It's time to break the cycle. It's time to believe God for greater things. It's time to step away and say, you know what? I might be locked inside of a house. But faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I don't have to be outside of the house to believe God has something greater for me. And God is calling you to make a difference. God is calling you to make a great impact. He's not done with you. You've not reached your potential. You've already started. They said the biggest part of an iceberg is not what's on top, it's what's on the bottom. The what's on the bottom you can't see, you can only see the top. And the devil wants you just to look at the top part of the iceberg, not knowing that your potential is right on the bottom inside of the water. Step in and step out. Free means breakthrough, break out. God wants you to get a breakthrough and break out into your potential. God bless you. Now we have an associate pastor, Tim, that's going to come and share some words with you. Hope you enjoyed this service as much as I did. Amen, amen. Whoa. Amen. Thank you for joining us out there. All of our Freedom Center Church uh, members and those who are not members but you're watching online, thank you so much for joining us. And I pray that you are as blessed with today's word as, as we were here. And we just know that uh, God is moving. And I know that right now we still have this issue with the coronavirus, but just continue praying. We believe this is going to break. It's not going to, yes. it, it's, it's never going to take the people of God down. We just know that and we believe it. <clears throat> right now, we're going to take up tithes and offerings, but before I do that, I want to mention that when you read the Bible, the, 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 the issue of money is mentioned over 800 times in the Bible. And when it's mentioned in an in, in aspect of those who believe, those, those who were called, those of us who call ourselves believers, it's never mentioned in a way that money is going to hurt you if you do what you're supposed to do. If you're obedient, you will be blessed. Jesus said that in, in Matthew chapter 5, that he says, I didn't come to abolish the law, 
God came to fulfill the law of the prophets. And in 2 Chronicles, the, the, the people of Jerusalem were actually given an order to bless. It says, and actually says, if you read it, it says to give the portion, not a portion. There's a specific amount. It says to give the portion to, to the priests and the Levites so that they can study, so that they can study the law of the Lord. That's what it says. So that they can, so that they don't have to worry about the things like you and I go to an everyday job. But the priests, the pastors, those who are called to, to, to oversee the church, to over, to, who, have a, who have a congregation, as our pastor does, the tithes and the offerings go so that he doesn't have to have an everyday job like you and I do. So that he can study. If you've ever been in a position, I'm in that position as an associate, to where I'm called on to, to, to preach from time to time. And I know firsthand what it takes to get that done. Pastor, Pastor Kiki, our youth pastors, they have jobs. They understand what it takes to, to be prepared and to study and to do that. And when you got a full-time job, it takes away from that. So your tithes and offerings go for so many different things, but specifically for that as well, so that our pastor can study, so that he doesn't have to carry a full-time job like you and I do. And it's not just something I'm telling you. This is something that the Word of God is commanding us to do. So if you're watching right now, you want to give up your tithes and offerings, we have a link right up here. FreedomCenterChurch.org. There's a link on there where you can give online. Is it up there? Yes. Amen. Praise God. And so you can do that. There's a link on there. Give online. Give your tithes. Your tithe is your 10%. That's, that's, what, that's what the Bible has commanded. That's what God has commanded us to give is your 10%. Your offerings is anything above and beyond that. Your, your tithe secures what rightfully belongs to you. When you give those offerings, you're saying, God, I trust you even more. Saying, God, I'm not putting my trust in money. The Bible says that where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. And I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, don't put your trust in money. The Bible also tells us that the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It doesn't say money is the root of all evil. We, we need money. We need money to survive. We need money to do so many things. And that scripture gets twisted a lot of times. Money is not the root of all evil. The love of money, where you put your heart. If your heart is in money, then that's yeah. where your treasure is at. Yeah. Yeah. But if your heart is in God and you trust God... It doesn't matter if you lose your job through this coronavirus or whatever it may be. God will provide for you. You still be faithful to him. Amen. And if you're watching right now, let's pray over tithes and offerings. Father God, we thank you for the tithe. We thank you for the offering. We thank you for those who are given this morning. Lord, and I just pray a multitude of blessings over their lives, over their families. Not just financially, Father God. That when we give up our tithes and offerings, it's not that you're just going to bless us financially. It's that you watch over us and you protect us. You protect our wives, our husbands, children. You watch over our homes. You protect our cars. It's so many different aspects to, to giving because it's an act of obedience. It's not about the money. It's an act of obedience. And when we are obe obedient to you, you are obedient to us and you protect us. And you, you, you send a hedge of protection over us and everything that belongs to us and everything that we love and cherish. And we just thank you this morning for the tithing and the offering. We ask that you use it. You multiply it for your kingdom and your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And And we're going to pray right now for Miss. Can I say her name? Rosie Do I say her name? We'll say her name. Okay. For Miss Rosie Garza. She's asking for prayers for her family. And I'm speaking to you right now, Rosie. I saw you log in, so I know you're watching. And Miss Rosie, you are covered. You are blessed. You are above and not beneath. You are the head and not the huh. tail. And we just pray blessings over you, yeah. over your family right now. Whatever huh. need you are having right now, Father God, and whatever way you choose, because we can't figure you out. We don't know how you work, but we know that you work in the supernatural. We know that you can meet her every need right now. And I pray for Miss Rosie Garza, her entire family. We lift them up to you. And Father God, you meet their every need. And we just thank you that that will be done. We thank you for the praise report that we will receive through these prayers. And I'm not praying by myself. We have a multitude yes. of people that are watching online. We have people here within this congregation. And we just thank you for healing. Whatever it is that that family is in need right now, Father God, you meet their need in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Last but not least, if you're watching online, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you'd like to do that right now, just repeat after me. It's real simple, real quick. Say, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I invite you into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. And I believe if you said that with your mouth, if you've spoken and you truly believe in your heart, I believe you got saved this morning. And I ask you, uh, excuse me, if you did get saved this morning, let us know about it. Leave a message in the comments. If you have a prayer request, leave messages in the comment section. We would love to pray with you. And um, 
We'll see you again Wednesday, 7 p.m. Tune in again, and uh, we love you, and God bless you.